you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Enjoyed the bye. Enjoy the Halloween season. As uh, now we are officially in the month of November. Where is this year gone? I mean, this has been incredible to see how fast uh, this year has gone. This football season's gone. And it's just like, it's been great. It's been fun. But at the same time, it kind of sucks knowing that uh, we're just two months from a new year. So it's it's just crazy that we're finally here in November. And uh, we know with the bye week last week, uh, we just, uh, you know, talked about a few things and went into a few things and dove into a few things. But now... It's getting into the nitty gritty. Now it is the most important stretch of the college football season for the Arkansas Razorbacks heading into the final four games of the season, which also happen to be conference games. And it starts with Mississippi State this Saturday in Fayetteville, 3 p.m. And, you know, I, I, I like the fact, first off, that Arkansas is five point favorites in this game. It might be the largest margin of a favorite that they've been in an SEC game since like 2016 or some crap like that. Like, I'm just guessing. I know it's probably been a long time. Uh, but Arkansas being the home team, they're 5-3 and three against the spread so far this year. And, you know, it's it's about right. It's about right. And both teams are 5-3. and three, But their 5-3 and three are not created equal. Because Mississippi State is 3-2 and two in SEC play. Well, and Arkansas is just 1-3 and three in SEC play. Mississippi State, granted, uh, they have one of those wins against Vanderbilt, which, you know, it seems like every year that Arkansas gets to play Vanderbilt is actually the years that, like, Vanderbilt is good or at least better than Arkansas. And the times that they could really use an opportunity to play Vanderbilt, uh, they don't get that chance. So that's kind of annoying. But either way, Mississippi State, they beat Texas A&M earlier this season, uh, 26-22. They smoked Vanderbilt. So... You know, the Texas A&M game, Arkansas beat Texas A&M, and I think that that was at a point where Texas A&M was not up to snuff or at least up to the same uh, wavelength or being as good as what uh, they are now. I think they've really improved, and they're starting to showcase that fact. But the way that Mississippi State beat Kentucky at home this past Saturday, I think is something that now, it's not that I'm saying that Arkansas won't win this game, but now it's not going to be as easy as a task as I maybe once thought. Because Mississippi State is one of those teams under Mike Leach that sometimes they'll look incredible. Sometimes they'll look, re- like offensively they'll look great. They'll have everything put together. They'll, they'll have some great uh, abilities, like <laughs> you know passing the ball, as we all know. But then there'll be some weeks where they just look absolutely atrocious. Like they just can't figure it out. And... That's what makes this game so strange, where it's like, I still think Arkansas will win. I'll pick Arkansas to win. I think that Arkansas is a better team than Mississippi State. But at the same time, you never know which Mississippi State team you're going to get. But if you look at Mississippi State, they have, they're averaging 425 yards per game offensively. 54 of that is rushing. So 371 yards of that is passing per game. That's what they do. It's the air raid. That's how they do it. Will Rogers has been their guy. He has completed, or he has about 2,900 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, seven picks. Uh, that's, that's what it comes down to with Mississippi State. Like, throw everything else out. If you slow down their pass or even stop their pass, they lose the game. It's the way it is. They lose the game. But the thing is about Mississippi State this year, is that they actually are better defensively, especially against the run. They're only giving up 90 yards per game, rushing. 90 yards per game. And we know that Arkansas, their thing has been rushing, running the ball, being affected at that. So that's going to be the key piece to it. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, two, it's a simple two-way concept. Slow down Mississippi State's pass, establish your run, you win the game. You win the game. It's over. It's done with. Arkansas gets out of there with a victory. Probably by more than five points, I would say. 
But the over-under set at 55 and a half, so could uh, end up being the over, I would think. Probably going to be more scoring than that. And the fact that you got a bye week. Like, you have extra time to prepare for Mississippi State uh, after they had to go through a pretty, I could call it a gauntlet, but a pretty tough game against Kentucky. Uh, you might be able to be in good shape here. This might be exactly what you want to have, what you want to be, how you want to do it if you're Arkansas. And so this is, this is the key game. Like, I know we look at every game as being a key game, but this is the key game. If Arkansas loses this game, there's a very good chance that they go one and three. Very good chance. Because if you can't beat Mississippi State at home, I mean, are you feeling to feel good about beating LSU on the road? You're not going to beat Bama. Your best chance is against Missouri, who's gone awful. But if you win this game against Mississippi State, that LSU game seems to be a little bit easier. Like, you might finally get it done there. And then Missouri will be terrible. Like, this is the key game. This is the difference. This game, this weekend, is going to be the difference between you going 8-4 and or you going 6-6. and This game right here. And, and, you know, 6-6 and was kind of where a lot of people thought Arkansas would be at the end of the season. But 8-4 and is what you need to be. 8-4 and is what you should be. Like, Arkansas, you're a better team than Mississippi State, and you've had an extra week to prepare, to get healthy, to get ready, to get amped up for this game. This is where it's all about, and you're going to have the home field advantage. It's going to be a 3 p.m. game, which I know is not a night game, but the way it's getting darker earlier uh, may be considered at least close to being a night game. You need to take care of business. And I think that Arkansas matches up really well against Mississippi State, and we know, as a little fun fact, Barry Odom has done a phenomenal job and being able to go up against Mike Leach offenses and slow them down. Now, will that be the case this week? We'll see. But I believe that's what's going to happen this week, this weekend. I believe Arkansas's defense is going to do a great job against Mississippi State. It's going to come down to can Arkansas's offense have success, not turn the ball over, not have three and outs, not have bad plays. Can that be the difference? I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know, we talk about college football, obviously, all the time on this podcast, but I got to tell you about Prize Picks, which is the daily fantasy made easy for all you college football fanatics. It, it's the largest and leader in college sports daily fantasy, and it offers more college football props than anyone else in the world. And the best thing about it is you get a chance to have 100% instant deposit up to $100 by using promo code Locked on by using the award winning app on the App Store or Google Play. Prize picks entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. And it's also safe and offers fast withdrawal. So don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com and use promo code locked on or go to your app store. Or download the app today. Prize picks is the daily fantasy made easy. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, so looking back on the college football weekend, which, again, since Arkansas didn't play, we just kind of got to go through a little bit of uh, the fun stuff that happened from other people and look at the chance or get a chance to look at what's going on in the SEC West and how it's shaping up. Uh, Because we know Arkansas right now is dead last in the SEC West. But they have four more chances. Like, they have three losses alongside LSU, who also has three losses. But they can make up some of that ground here at the very end. Uh, but some of the games that happened, and it was a like it wasn't a great weekend, like f- just for the SEC. I think in college football is pretty solid, but the SEC it wasn't good. Like Georgia and Florida started out being okay, and it cracked me up because it was three to nothing with like four minutes to go in the first half with Georgia over Florida, and then they just exploded for twenty four points <laughs> in like a matter of like five seconds. So. Uh, Georgia smokes Florida, and it looks like Georgia's pretty much got it well in hand. They've won the West or East already. Like before the month of November, they won it. And their only games left are Missouri win, Tennessee win. I don't even know who CHSO is. Who is that? Charleston Southern win, Georgia Tech win. They're going to the college football playoff. They're going to the SEC championship. It's all done. So congratulations to Georgia. Go ahead and book your trip. Uh, We talked about Mississippi State beating Kentucky and how that was big. Missouri is so freaking bad. Missouri is an awful football team. They beat Vanderbilt, which everyone's beaten Vanderbilt. Like, there's nothing to really hang your hat on when you beat Vanderbilt. But this game was in doubt at the end. Like, in the fourth quarter, the game was still in doubt. Missouri won 37-28 to over, over Vanderbilt. They won by nine points in this game. 
But they are so bad. And so if Arkansas this if Arkansas does not beat Missouri this year, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna want people to be fired because of how bad they are, and there's zero excuse for that happening this year. Uh, but the the other big game though that was so fascinating, I think everybody was looking forward to was Ole Miss and Auburn. Because Ole Miss had been skating through, to me at least, so much of the season where, you know, they barely beat Arkansas in the final two-point conversion play. They barely beat Tennessee in the controversy that happened at the end there. Uh, It's not to say that they aren't a good team because they're getting the wins, but it's not like they've just been dominating. Like, they have skated by a few of these wins, and I thought that maybe, just maybe, running into Auburn would finally be what did them in, and that's exactly what happened. Auburn beat them 31-20. to And uh, I know that, again, we, we talk about Razorbacks in this podcast, but I think it's still relevant because Wayne Kiffin wa- lost his game for Ole Miss because he kept going forward on fourth down and getting and not getting it for whatever reason. Like, I understand that there's times where, you know, you want to be aggressive. You want to be able to make plays. You want to put the ball in the hands of your playmakers and Matt Corral. We know about that and all that. That's fine. But Lane Kiffin tries so hard to be the smartest guy in the room so often that, yeah, sometimes it pays off, but when it doesn't, you look back and be like, dude, stop. Stop being that guy. Stop trying to make it so much more complicated than what it is and go out there and kick the field goal. Just kick the field goal. You got a good field goal kicker. Just kick it. Get your points. Live to fight another day. Make it interesting. Make it closer. And But instead, because of your just inability to change anything or to and your inability to just change your mindset and how you go about it, you ended up essentially costing your team the game. Now, and it was really dumb because at, the, at halftime, uh, Ole Miss, or Auburn was up 28-17. to 17. All right, so you had a three-point score from Ole Miss in the third quarter and then three points scored by Auburn in the fourth quarter. So not much scoring was done there in the second half by either team. But it's, it's just one of those things where I, I look at what Auburn has done or Ole Miss has done this year, and again, I'm not taking anything away from them, but those are the reasons why, and those are the things why it's like, and seeing Lane Kiffin's emotions and antics on the sidelines when Matt Corral threw a pick and stuff, I'm like, dude, that, you, like you're better than what you were, but you still show signs of like the guy that was disastrous at pretty much every head coaching spot that he's ever been at. Like you still show your emotions too much. You still like try to be smarter than everybody. Like it, it just fails on you and it fails miserably and it failed against you against Auburn. And so it's, that's what sucks about it too is because now you look at again we look at the SEC West like Arkansas had a few bad plays against Auburn you know and and that was the difference in the game the Ole Miss you two-point conversion changes everything you beat A&M you have a chance to beat Mississippi State and LSU and Bama left like this is such a crazy year in the SEC West where you have a lot of different teams that are into the mix of everything. Like Auburn's three and one. Like maybe Brian Harson and Auburn are actually good. Like maybe they are a good football team. Uh, they're still in the mix. Uh, I guess they would be technically still in play for the SEC Western Division title. Although, uh, because them and, them and Alabama have to play at the end of the year, but Auburn's got a tough match at the at Texas A&M uh, this upcoming weekend. So uh, nothing easy about that. They got a pretty tough stretch as well. But the, it, my point is this and just saying about Ole Miss and Auburn and all that is that the West is wide open from the standpoint of you don't know who's going to finish what. Like Arkansas, I would be hard-pressed to think Arkansas finishes last in the West. I mean, I just would be. But I also couldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Arkansas finished third or fourth. Like there's just so much range in between there. Like I think Alabama, of course, is going to win the West, and I think Auburn's going to be right behind them. But – you know, is A&M going to lose another game? They may lose to Auburn this weekend. If you're Arkansas, and they got Ole Miss still on the road, that'll be a tough one. And LSU to end the season. Like, A&M's not out of, out of the woods yet. You know, Ole Miss, we talk about them. They still have to play Texas A&M and play Mississippi State. They get Vanderbilt, which is such, such crap that their Eastern opponent is Vanderbilt every year. It's like a free win. So that sucks. Mississippi State, we know they got to play Arkansas, but they still got to play Auburn and Ole Miss. So, you know, just because Arkansas is sitting at one and three and dead last in the SEC West does not mean that they are going to finish last in the West. Like, there is a lot of games to be played. Even though it's just four weeks left, there's a lot of games to be played in general from this SEC Western division. And so I'm going to be interested to see how Arkansas shores everything up and how they finish strong. That's going to be the key. That's why the month of November is so important. 
It's about you finishing strong. You got to do it. It's the way you got to do it. You know another thing you got to do? You got to try Bilt Bar. It's the best tasting Bilt Bar or protein bar of all time. If you haven't tried it now, that's you. That's a you problem. You're the one that's missing out. They say it's a protein bar, but it doesn't taste like one. Seriously. Like every time that I've gotten one, first off, the flavors are amazing and they're very healthy, low carb, low calorie, low fat, low sugar, but high in protein, which is all the healthy benefits that you want. But it's like tasting a, a candy bar. Like they taste amazing. They're healthy. They're convenient. They're easy. They have so many different flavors to choose from. And they're going to introduce limited time flavors every three to four days. So you got to check out the website often because you don't want to miss out. Go to builtbar.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at builtbar.com. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, final segment of the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You know, we always talk about times and games and everything, and I don't want to look ahead, but this just came across the timeline on social media, so I wanted to go ahead and pass it along all to you. Arkansas and LSU will be a night game in Death Valley. Wow. 6.30 will be the game on the SEC Network. Uh, some other games of note, Auburn, Mississippi State, that's at the 11 a.m. slot. Uh, you have Tennessee and Georgia. That's going to be the 2.30 CBS spot. Ole Miss and uh, a and is going to be on ESPN at 6 p.m. Uh, so all the other games, he really gives a rip. But still, uh, you get a night game down there in Death Valley, which, man, you know, we can say one way or the other. People are like, oh, what about night games? Well, yeah, Arkansas does fine in just night games, so it's not going to be anything bad. Just, just wait on it. So anyways, it's, it's going to be great. But the real tragedy of this all, and I don't know if I brought this up last week, on the, the podcast, but I, I want to bring it up again when we talk about times and 11 o'clock and all those things. Like, Arkansas football home games this year had one game under the lights. One. Of all their home games, they had one night game. That was Texas. Remember how much fun that was? That Texas game, how electric that was? It was great. But you've had all the other games at different times. Whether it was, I guess, at the beginning you had Rice... Uh, that game was at three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you also had Georgia Southern at three, somewhere around there. And then you had A&M should have been a home game, but even if it wasn't, it would have been 230, but still. Um, then you have, <laughs> just so dumb that these schedules and these times are just all over the place. You had Auburn at 11 a.m. You had at UAPB at 11 a.m. Uh, you have Mississippi State at 3 p.m. And now you're going to have Old Missouri. That one's already set in stone at 1 p.m. So it's like... One game at night in Fayetteville. You know, I understand that it's not the decision. It's it's about television. It's about all that. But God bless. I'd like to know who else. Who else has had only one game in the SEC at night? At home. All year long. I need to do that. I need to look that up and see how it goes. But hey, you're getting a night game on the road in LSU. I'm hoping that LSU is just so far gone that they're so like bad and they've given up on the season. Ed Orgeron's gone. That it's like going to be like the easiest game of all time. Like you just go out down there, you, you, you hit them in the mouth early. You're home for dinner. Like I'm hoping that's the case, but I don't know with LSU. I just don't want to have it to where you've lost to Ed Orgeron every single year since he's been the LSU coach and he never had a chance to beat him. Like too many coaches in the SEC, Arkansas had that against. Arkansas never beat Kevin Sumlin at A and M, and he got fired. Arkansas never beat Barry Odom at Missouri, and he got fired. Now he's your D.C., but still, he got fired. Um, they're in a, they never beat Joe Moorhead, who was only there for two seasons, and he just put it to Arkansas those two years. So you never had a chance to beat him. You're, you're flirting with the fact that you may not ever have a chance to beat um, to beat LSU and Ed Orgeron in, in that regard. So, you know, there's just been a few teams that have been that way where it's just like, no, I don't like that. That doesn't need to happen. That doesn't need to be that way. So... Hopefully that changes against uh, LSU next week, but it's going to be at 6.30. It's going to be an SEC network. Hopefully Arkansas is going into that game 6-3 and three after beating Mississippi State with a little bit of momentum. That's what you're hopeful for, but hey, that's why you got to play the games because this is the SEC after all. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNavers for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast.